Good afternoon, and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Today's organist is Richard Elliott, and I'm your host, Luke Howard. Here on Piping Up, we're starting something new. Periodically, we're going to reach back into the archives and present some earlier video performances. It might be works based on a similar topic, or a program that celebrates a special date or event or it could simply be some particularly fine performances from the organist of the day. And we'll keep presenting a steady stream of brand new episodes as well, don't worry. Richard's concert opens today with C.S. Lang's Tuba Tune in D Major from 1929. Tuba, in this context, doesn't mean the large brass instrument commonly found in bands and modern symphony orchestras. It's simply the Latin word for trumpet and as a common designation for a trumpet-like stop on a pipe organ. So Lang's tuba tune is actually an organ work that showcases a brassy solo stop on the organ. And that's in fact why it was written, to celebrate the installation of a tuba stop on the organ at the school where Lang worked at the time. Following that performance, Richard will play the second movement Allegro from Handel's Organ Concerto No. 5, HWV 293. Handel's organ concerti were some of the first examples in England of organ music performed in a secular setting, in this case during interval breaks in his oratorios, rather than as church music.
When we talk about balance in music, it could refer to the proportions or arrangement of movements within a work, the number of measures in the home key and related keys, juxtapositions of motifs or duple and triple meter, simple and compound rhythms, or the formal patterns in which the music is cast. How a sense of musical balance is achieved is in fact one of the important distinctions between the periods of classical European music style. In Handel's organ concerti, for example, the movements are grouped in contrasting pairs, which was a common means for achieving balance in early 18th century music. The allegro we just heard, the second movement, was in F major and 4-4 time. The movement before it, however, is a larghetto in 3-4 meter. The movement following is a D minor siciliana in 12-8 time. The balance is achieved by variety over the course of the entire work. C.S. Lang used a da capo form in his tuba tune, a form he borrowed from Baroque opera arias of the kind Handel composed so brilliantly. In a da capo form, the middle section provides the contrast and is framed by a repetition of the opening section, which was what da capo means, from the head or from the beginning. Balance was achieved through different means in other periods and musical styles. The question of musical balance itself has its corollary in the kinds of balance we aim for in our lives. It's not the same as choosing between right and wrong or good and evil. This kind of balance seeks a stable and productive relationship between contrasting good things, such as rest and exercise, community and independence, generosity and self-care, work and recreation, and so on. And there are many options for achieving that balance. We won't all do it the same way, though we're usually quick to recognize when something is out of balance in our lives. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah asked, doth the plowman plow all day to sow? No, of course not. If you're going to sow, at some point you have to stop plowing. If you're going to rest, at some point you have to stop working. Admittedly, life balance might be harder to achieve than the kind of formal balance we find in a two-minute piece of music, but we should always try and decide if something in our lives needs change and contrast in order to keep us in a good equilibrium. We continue now with Virgil Fox's organ arrangement of J.S. Bach's sacred aria, Com Zusatod, BWV 478, in today's program, we've already heard a genuine early 18th century organ work and a fairly good imitation of one. Fox's Come Sweet Death, on the other hand, sounds rather less like Bach and much more like Virgil Fox. But then it balances today's program rather nicely.
Richard plays two of his own arrangements now, the traditional pioneer hymn tune, Come, Come Ye Saints, and a melody originally composed by Jean-Jacques Rousseau for his 1752 opera, Le Devin du Village. As a hymn tune, Rousseau's melody is known by its official name, Greenville. We're hearing it today under the title of Yes, My Native Land, I Love Thee, a missionary hymn text by Samuel Francis Smith, who is perhaps better known as the author of My Country, Tis of Thee. Many of you may recognize this tune alternatively as Lord, Dismiss Us With Thy Blessing, or Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy.
Richard closes his program now with the Vidor, popular shorthand for the concluding toccata from Charles Marie Vidor's Organ Symphony No. 5, composed in 1879. It's a legendary recessional that requires no further introduction.
Thank you for watching this episode of Piping Up featuring Principal Tabernacle Organist Richard Elliott. We're so glad you joined us. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, Organ Concerts at Temple Square, streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.